Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Tim Walsh coming to you live from the Illinois Fire Service Institute on the campus of the University of Illinois. Today, we're going to be going over first due considerations for a rope rescue job. Uh, we're going to let you get signed on. Let us know where you're watching from so we can shout out to you. The handouts for today's class are already posted on our COVID-19 portal, and you can look for them there, and we'll post them in the comments section later today so you can refer to them. Uh, once again, we're happy to have you here. Uh, sit down, grab a cup of water or a cup of coffee, and spend 45 minutes with us so that we can bring some live training to you. Once again, we're outside today. It's a little bit windy, not as windy as it was last week, so we'll be speaking loud so that you can hear us. Okay, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Hey, good afternoon everybody. Tim Walsh coming to you live from the Illinois Fire Service Institute. Today we're going to be covering rope rescue operations for a first due company. Uh, the handout for today's follow-on is already posted in the comments section. Please comment, let us know where you're watching from, and send us your questions. I have three great instructors from the rope program here. Ryan and Joe and Zach will be teaching you today, and we'll be doing live hands-on demo as well. So we got to coach you up a little bit on what we're going to do, and then we're going to show you what we're going to do. So from Byron, on the north to St. Louis on the south, from the smallest department to the biggest career department, we're going to show you some techniques that you can use right now this afternoon after this drill's over. So we look forward to seeing you, and without any further nonsense, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan and Joe and Zach. Fellas, you want to get this started for me, please? So hello, I'm Ryan Evans. I'm a captain with the Springfield Fire Department. Joe Smithers, driver engineer, Springfield Fire Department. Zach Camille, firefighter, Springfield Fire. So one way to be successful as a for, uh, company officer is to have a plan. I'm sure you already have a plan for what you're gonna do if you go to a full arrest, you know, what equipment you're gonna bring, who's gonna do what job, and, and what to do when more people come in. So we're gonna talk about rope rescue so we can come up with our plans. But one of the things you need for rope rescue, there's several things. One of them is people gotta have the right training. And yes, we're talking about people having rope rescue training. We hope that people on your crew have went to our IFSI rope rescue operations class and attended it, at least some of you. We'd like to get the whole fire department someday. That would be wonderful, okay? So the right training. So not only did you go and you understand about such as anchors and the ropes, what rope you need and what equipment you need and how, uh, <clears throat> and the difference in forces and, and what, uh, and haul systems and knots so we need the right training. Then you need to keep practicing, consistently practice. You don't want the, an incident to be the first time you have ever did these, this kind of exercise or, or worked out your plan. The other thing, the right equipment. You're gonna see the equipment that we're gonna use. Once again, we're gonna use life safety rope. We're gonna have equipment that is rated for the 
for the uh, activities that we're going to be doing we also need the right people yeah the ones that are competent and competent they've been practicing with you and you know what their skills are and what their skill level is also it may mean we need to be calling in the technical rescue team get them going we might need ambulance them are the right people as well to get them once what we get this person to the ground then where are they going to go do they need medical care we might need a maintenance person coming in because how do we get to the top of that roof <clears throat> so with having the right training the right equipment and the right people we can come up with the right plan and we'll discuss our different plans that's possible possible out there as we're going along with our different scenarios as I said our handout that we have here some of the con considerations that we have okay when you're coming up on scene we got to do accountability you're going to get on scene and you're going to have to show up and you're going to need to do a scene size up get on that radio tell them what's going on start calling for more help can you you know is it something simple do you need that technical rescue team coming the other thing you'll see with our PPE that we got on so we don't need our full bunker gear to do a rope rescue now you might need it for the weather but the helmet, I could have had my firefighter helmet on if I don't have a helmet like this. I need gloves, I need boots on. Some of the other things that we gotta consider. If we get there, and yes, it got called in as a rope rescue, but it really is in a confined space. So if it was a grain bin, yes, we may use rope as for rescue, but it's a confined space, which means now I'm not trained to that level to go in, but maybe I can still secure them. The other things, so we can secure the area, call for more help, we establish the hot, warm, and cold zones. We can, we might have to do lockout, tagout. We need to consider if we're working near an open edge, we may have to do tag lines so we don't get pulled over that open edge so it secures us back. We got to consider the weather, op, you know, weather conditions. Also, hazmat. You know, are we going to be dealing with hazmat? We, we might need to call them in as well. <laughs> that hazmat team. So they can be put to work and as i mentioned before consider getting somebody that actually knows that building or that area so they can assist you to get through the right place to assist you with that lockout tag out when you do get there you need to get some a lot of times above them you need to start making contact make verbal contact with that person in distress if they're able to talk to you are they conscious are they unconscious <clears throat> so did they fall were they climbing up? So what was the situation? What got them into trouble? Is there a medical condition that got them there? You can start talking to other eyewitnesses. Maybe they can talk to you about how, how they got there, who the person is. How many people are we talking about? Is it just one? Is there more than one? Can we handle that ourselves or do we need more help? And I'll tell you, a lot of times if I'm talking about somebody just hanging over the side of a building or maybe even possibly a water tower my first, my plan A is I'm going to go with the ladder truck, okay? So ladder truck, if I can get there and I can raise that ladder truck up there, that's how I'm going to do it. But if I don't have that, then we got to come up with different options. And that goes back to the, the right training, the right equipment, and the right people. So let's show you what we got set up right now. So today for safety, because we are working under a live edge, uh, we're working with a live patient as our demonstration goes. So we do have him on a Munner belay on our bomb proof anchor and he is actually self belayed with a Petzl ASAP. And right now the way we have this tied off is the correct way to tie off a belay. So if he was to get caught into his ASAP and he wasn't on a lowering system, we could Munner him down to the ground so that we'd safely lower him down to the ground from his belay if, if need be. We also have a main line tied up with the CMC. This is the MPD. Uh, CMC makes this device. It's a multi-purpose multi device and we use it for a multitude of different things. Today we're going to be using it primarily for lowering, but it can be used as a change of direction progress capture for 3 to 1 or 5 to 1. Today the scenario is our person climbed down. We're going to have four separate scenarios for you. Today's scenario is uh, the person stuck either on a ledge or on a rope. For the first scenario and the second scenario, he's just going to be on the ledge. We need to get a rope down to him and secure him and make sure he can't fall any further. For the third and fourth scenarios, we're going to build systems to try to get him up or down. We'll show you both of those. Well, you can see we're doing this on top of, we're at IFSI in Champaign. We're on top of the technical rescue prop. And you can, one thing that's really nice about up here, we have proper anchors. 
I mean, we got a great bomb proof anchor right here. We're not to worry about it, but this could change. If we were doing it in wilderness, maybe that's our tree. In some situation, maybe it's gonna be one of our vehicles that could be our anchor, but we might have to create one as well. And there's different options in that. You'll notice as well, we are using life safety rope that's general rated. If we're falling this down, one thing that we're able to do as well is cause the main reason for rope failure is abrasion. Okay, so when we're, so the main reason for abrasion would be going over this edge, but this is rolled, right? This is a, was a round pipe that they welded onto here. So we don't have to worry about it. It's got a smooth transition, a smooth roll. We might have to pad around here if we were worrying about too much abrasion and friction, but at these cans, we're good. So let's move on to our scenario. As I said, for, I want you to picture this. So yeah, we had somebody climbing up. They climbed up to a position and they were, they got to a point and they were not, all of a sudden realized that they were unable to get down. We're just showing up. We're just showing up with two rescuers, okay? We're showing up with two rescuers and one rope, okay? That's all we have. And we're gonna show you what we're able to do. Hey, Ryan, before you set this up, so consider that our victim, one of our firefighters here, is going to stay on his safety belay. Safety belay. And the reason for that is because he's actually sitting on the edge of the can. So obviously that rope would not be there if we were making a rescue, or it may be there. So everything we do here at the Institute is redundant. And you'll learn that when you come to a class in operations. We redundant safety back up everything. So if you see redundancy in the way that we operate today, it's because we're actually working on a live edge. So let me know where you're watching from and send in those questions. Ryan, please go ahead. So Zach here, he's going to show you tying the bowline. Since he's going to be lowering down a non-slip loop, he's going to show you how to, to how he's going to tie it around him, and then that way he knows that loop's going to be big enough to go around that other person. By tying it around himself, he's, you know, he's tying it in safety. If it could fit around him, most likely, I mean, of course, we might have to make adjustments for certain people, then that might have to, but this one, if it goes around him, we know that what the, the person in distress looks like, it's going to fit around them. So he's made his bowline. We're going to lower it down to our person. Person in distress, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'm going to be lowering a rope down to you, okay? Okay. We're talking to him the whole time. Once you get the rope, Put it through your arms and under your armpits. Okay. Try to keep the knot in front of your face for me. Let me know once you're in it. Got it. Okay. So now we got the we got the rope wrapped around so they can't go down lower. You can see how Zach's now going to take the other end and just secure it back to our anchor. Just by going around that anchor multiple times, we can create a tensionless hitch. And as I'm saying, this is just a method. If all I got, I got just two rescuers and I got some rope, I can still do something. In the meantime, we are still calling for people to come. We're still calling for that technical rescue team. We just secured that person in distress so they can't get any worse. Called for more help, which could be right the technical rescue team rope rescue team we could be needing pd we might could use need some ambulance that's coming but just because you did this doesn't mean we're done we've just secured them and you got a lot of options here too right so if this is the only thing you can do you carry one bag of safety rope and you're able to talk your chief into buying that for you you can secure somebody to the side of the building and slow down their progression so they don't fall off the side of the building or they fall off the ledge and then you can get proper people to help work you make that rescue that might uh, entail removing some glass or opening a window and once that person's secured on rope then moving them to that open point we don't always have to go down on rope we don't always have to go up on rope this is one way for a small manpower fire company, two people, to make a really good rescue and look like they know what they're doing by just learning the bowlin. Now that bowlin will be up on our YouTube site later today so that you can practice it. And if you're anything like I was early in my fire service career, most guys have to tie knots 10 times, it was 30 times for me. And you can ask anybody here that works with me, it takes me a little practice. So you can slow down those videos later today and go through that bowlin and learn how to make that rescue yourself. So now we're gonna go ahead to move to scenario number two and Ryan's gonna take the helm again. Ryan? 
All right, on scenario number two, once again, we got a person on the ledge, but this person is conscious and they got a harness on. So we know they know how to use a harness, but we're going once again, all we have is two rescuers. We got our life safety rope and we got a carabiner. So Zach, this time, so we tied the bowline before, this time he's going to tie the figure eight on a bite with the safety. And you'll see that's the only two knots that we're going to be covering today. We're going to, we did the bowline and the figure eight on a bite with the safety. So once again, as Zach passes this knot down, the reason why we put the bullet in the first place is because we're, the first scenario was somebody came up and they did not have a harness on. Now they have a harness on, so we're showing you a way that we can secure them and capture their progress with just one rope and a carabiner. And now we have this to pass down. They can clip it into their harness and we can secure it the same way we did with the bullet. But we have to make contact with our patients, so let's do that now. One second, guys. So we had one question come in already about how many wraps you need to make for a tensionless hitch. And a tensionless hitch, as Ryan said before, is only one way to create an anchor. We spend at least a full day doing anchor preparation here at the Institute in both the operation and technician level class. And obviously, you don't have a bomb-proof anchor like this at every building you go to. So I'm going to have Ryan answer that question, but remember, that's only one way to anchor. And that would be a whole other class if you guys want to get into anchors. We want to be smooth and quick and show first two companies what they can do and what they can get done. Ryan? Okay, for, for the titulous hitch, yeah, we get to ask that question all the time. How many times do you wrap around? They, everybody wants a certain answer. It's just a certain number, and it doesn't work like that. It depends on what you're wrapping around, what that anchor is. So if that anchor is really big, like a tree, you know, with bark, it you don't have to wrap as many times. So the idea is you'd wrap around there and then pull on your rope. Did it slide? Did it move? If it did, wrap around several more times. If it's something small, you wrap around a smaller pipe that's at least four four times the diameter of the rope and it's galvanized, well that makes it really slick. So you might have to wrap even more. So you wrap, 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 pull on that line. Did it move? Did it slide? If it did, you gotta wrap it several more times. Zach's gonna make contact with his patient. Once he makes contact with the patient, he's gonna explain to him what he's gonna do. Person in distress. Yes, sir. I'm gonna send down a rope with a carabiner on it, okay? Okay. What I'm gonna have you do is once you get it, Clip this carabiner into your harness. All right, gotcha. Let me know once you're clipped in. Okay. All right, I'm good. Gate closed? Yes, sir. Copy. My full tension. Once Zach anchors this rope back, and once again, we've got him secured. Even if he did get pulled over that edge, he can't go anywhere. And just like I mentioned in the last scenario, while we're all doing this, we've already called for that technical rescue rope rescue, you know, rope rescue team to be in route. We've requested ambulances. We might even have to request the police. But get more help coming. We secure them so they can't get any worse. And we were able to do this just with a couple rescuers and a life safety rope. All right, we're gonna get a little bit more advanced. We're gonna do scenario number three. So a lot of times, like Ryan was talking about, you're gonna find people that climb without a harness, but you're gonna find professional window washers or tuck pointers that are wearing a harness. So you need to be adaptable in what you do and what you prepare for. So that's why we're showing you different techniques that the first due company can operate within even by not taking rope operations. Of course, we want you to take rope operations with us so that you have more tricks in your toolbox and you grow as a firefighter for the rest of your career and you're able to make more rescues in a safe manner, but make sure that you're ready to do the bare minimum. Get a bag of life safety rope, get a bag of carabiner, or get a carabiner, not a bag of carabiners, okay, and much. practice. Ahead, the other go. thing that we would remind you is if you're gonna practice this at your fire station or your fire department, two ropes on who's ever hanging on the edge. Don't be that fire department that drops your guy practicing rope stuff. Always have a belay on who's ever sitting on an edge. That's a must, and we would require that here, and we would want you to do that at home because we want you to train safely. Ryan? Okay, for scenario number three, let's picture this as a possibly a window washer. 
They have, could be even a ledge, could be somewhere. The person is hanging in distress. We're going to, once again, secure them with a little bit more advanced technique and then raise them up to an area of safety. But this particular one, what we've done is, so when we're talking about this time, we have three people here, right? Our crew of three. And so we got more people. We got the right people because they got the right training and we got the right equipment. So this equipment, we have it pre-rigged. So we got it pre-rigged. So what, all you got to do is reach in that, reach into that bag, pull out that anchor strap and it has everything that we need into uh, attached. So Zach grabbed that anchor strap. He wraps, going to go ahead and wrap it around our anchor. This particular system that you're, we're using, we're going to go into it in just a minute. It is our tandem prussic system. One of the key points I want to make on this is having this ready to go, having it pre-rigged, and then practice it, right? Just because you haven't done it, you got to touch it and bring it out. Get that equipment out and use it quite often. So the first time you do this drill, it may, it may end up being that it takes you an hour. And then the next time you do it, it might take you 45 minutes, then 30 minutes. Then you all can get it down to where this becomes a 10 minute drill. Just because you've practiced so well so you can't get it wrong. So Zach's going to take the knot and start feeding it down to our victim. progress we had. He was up at a certain height and now he can fall no further down. What we've done with this is added pieces of equipment in to do the exact same thing. So working from our anchor out, we have our anchor strap around our bomb proof anchor with our load releasing hitch. This particular hitch we build here at IFSI and it is our uh, load releasing hitch that allows us to have a prussic minding pulley with our tandem prussics on it. But if you have this system set up, you don't have a way to lower. So we also put in a progress, I'm sorry, a uh, descent control device. For this descent control device, we're using the Petzl IDL, but you could use a six bar rack, an MPD, or you could use the new Maestro from Petzl. So once we have the progress captured, we can tension this line on the other side and we set our prussics. Now that person can go no further down. So we have our load side of the line and then Zach's holding tight on our uh, tail end of our line, but he can let go of that line now, and then we have captured the progress on this. So now, what do we want to do? We want to take that person and either lift them up or lower them down. For this scenario, we want to lift them up. Whatever line that they were in is null and void for them now because they wouldn't have called us if their equipment was working. So we're going to assume that their equipment no longer works, and he's only a couple feet from a window, or we can get him up the ledge faster than we get him down the side of the building. So that's what we're gonna go over now. At this time, <clears throat> this is a one-to-one -one system. We just got a knot. If we ended up pulling one foot on this side of the rope, it'd mean that he would raise up one foot. If he is 150 pounds, it takes us 150 pounds to pull him up. So with a couple of pieces of equipment with Petzl's rescue sender and a carabiner and a rock exotica pulley, but it doesn't have to be this exact stuff. You can use a prussic cord, carabiner, any other sort of pulley. 
you can use a prusset cord and just a carabiner. You're still getting mechanical advantage, just not as much as this system allows. We're allowed to clip this system into the main line. Once we've got that secured, we come back with our tail line and put it through our carabiner or through our pulley. Now we have now we have a three to one system built in line. The reason why this is considered an inline system, and this thing is. <laughs> well, let's I'm on the opposite side of the room. There we go. The reason why this is an inline system is that we're building mechanical advantage out of the main line that we're on. If we were to bring in a second rope and clip it into our, our main line, we would have an attached system. But right now, this is an inline three to one. The last step before we start to haul in this process is we're going to stretch this system out so that we get the most amount of haul out of it when we can. Once we get that out, our haul team is ready. What I'm going to start doing is I'm going to talk to my patient at this point. Patient, are you ready to be lifted? Yeah. Okay, so he's ready to go. Now the patient's going to protect himself at all times. And during these scenarios, especially in training, we need to make sure that our patient protects himself at all times. Make sure you're protecting yourself, buddy, okay? All right. So now as we pan back up to our haul team, you can see these guys are ready to go. They're gonna grab on the haul side of this three to one, and they're gonna wait for the preparatory command, haul team prepare to haul. Once we give them that preparatory command, haul team prepare to haul, they tension the system. Now we give the, uh, the command haul. As they start to haul this system up, for every foot they pull, he comes up, uh, for every foot we haul up, they have to pull three feet in with a three to one system. Our progress capture is our tandem prussix. So once they get to the spot where they can haul no more, they stop. Then we call a set. We set both the prussix. And now we can let it go back into our progress capture and reset our mechanical advantage system. So we scoot this up. And now we're ready to go again. Last thing I took my victim, you good? Yes, sir. We're going to haul one more time. Make sure you're protecting yourself at all times. All right. So as we haul this patient up again, you'll start to see a couple things happening. Haul team, prepare to haul. 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 So as we lift him up, you can see the main line, the blue line that he was caught on, has gone slack. We've taken him out of his system that was no longer using, he was no longer using, but we kept him on his belay. Now we've got oh. him up to where we want him to be. Now we're gonna check with our victim. Victim, where are you at? Do you need to go down? Go down. Okay, we're going to lower our victim back through this, so I need to hold these prussics open. Lower. Lower. Stop. Yep. All right, now our victim is on our ledge. So he's in an area of refuge now. We don't have to raise or lower him any further. That would be simulating raising him up into a windowsill to where he can get himself out of his rigging or we got guys the floor above him, we lift him up, we grab him through the window and now we no longer need to lift him or lower him down anymore. Okay, before we break this stuff down, we're going to kind of talk about the evolution of rope teaching and rope rescue. So when I first came on the job and Ryan taught me 20 years ago, and that's no baloney, uh, we used double prussics, which we just showed you. But there's great new equipment out there from our sponsors, Petzl, CMC, uh, Sterling Rope, uh, Rescue Direct, Elevated Safety, and Harkin Industrial, who have all partnered with the University of Illinois Fire Service Institute to provide the latest, greatest tools in rope rescue. So we're going to go over some of those great new tools for you now so that you can use those on the fire ground while you're making rescues in your locale. So uh, the guys are just getting this ready to go, get it set up, and then Ryan's going to take the helm again from me right now. Ryan? Yes, sir. So yes, so same, almost pretty much same scenario. We're not going to lower them down. But the idea is with this, with this right equipment that we're going to be using, yeah, we're using, we're going to be using now our, our Petzl Maestro here. That's going to be, take place of our, of all that other uh, tandem prussics that we're using earlier, that prussic mine and pulley, that load release and hitch. All that, this does it. This does that job. You're going to see that it may, the transition from being able to raise back down to lower is done in seconds using this particular item equipment it takes the place of all this right 
So if, you, if you're using this setup, this is the traditional setup we've been teaching for years. You have all this plus a six bar rack. That takes the place of all of it. And it's just one of the descent control devices that's out there. This uh, CMC MPD that's here, it does the exact same job, okay? One of the keys though is if you get this equipment, keep using it. You gotta use it over, get that repetition in. All right, Zach, go ahead and anchor it. Go ahead, Zach, while you're tying that up. Hey guys, so we had one more question come in from Lonnie Kirchner. He wants to talk about a rope guide on the edge. And Lonnie, we talked about it a little bit in the beginning. This is a manufactured rope rescue prop here, the TRT prop here down at the university. So it has a rolled edge with a bar, so there's no intrusion to the rope. We routinely inspect the rope to make sure it's all operable and in good condition before we put any class through here. But talk about a line direction device on the top of the building for us, please, would you, Ryan? Well, there's different options that you could do. If we were, because right, we mentioned before that, that abrasion, that's what we fear with rope. It doesn't take much if a line is uh, is loaded, right? It has all that weight on it, it's pulled tight. If it gets to something sharp, it could, it could cut it. And then also as we're rolling over certain edges, we might have to worry about that's more friction, which it means it takes more force to raise that that person up. But so there's there's different options. There are like edge rollers that we could be using. There is different high uh, artificial high directionals, uh, such as the Arizona Vortex that people can use to avoid that kind of friction. They have um, you can have use some other pulleys as well. So there are all kinds of options in here. Luckily for us, because of the scans on these training props, we, we don't have to worry about abrasion right now. But there are a lot of different options out there. I guess we're going into our third evolution? The fourth, our fourth evolution. Yep, so, so with this particular one, okay, this particular one we are, we got the Maestro already hooked up. I'm going to just hold open the handle here so Zach can pull the rope and lower it down to him. And once again, just like we've done on the other ones, he gets it down to our person in distress and secures them. So we are lucky because our person down there, they are, they are conscious, they got a harness on, they understand what they need to do. Clip that into your harness. Okay. Let me know once you're clipped in. So tension in this system, what is great about this, once again, with even the handle shut, with Joe pulling on this rope, he's able to tension the system, and you can hear this, you hear that clicking noise, that is securing it, that's locking it in, so now the rope is not being able to go back out the other direction. The concept of this is the exact same as the other three evolutions that we've done. We've lowered a rope with a carabiner and a knot on it, and tied it into our victim. Then we were able to wrap that around the beam again, and now we're just upgrading that to a different system. It does the same thing. It's progress capture. At initial, for a first in company officer, if all you get accomplished is getting an anchor and establishing progress capture, you've won. We can come in later and we can build our systems to raise them up or put in a system in to lower them down. However, we need to patient package that person. But as a first in company officer, some of the things that you're considering are, can I make this situation better immediately? Yes. If you can get that end of the rope down to that person and then capture their progress, whether it be wrapping a, an anchor or whether it be putting it in tandem prussics or whether it's putting it into a device such as the uh, Petzl Maestro, whatever your, your abilities are, do that. Because as long as you get progress capture, you've made that person a lot more safe in the situation they're in. You've mitigated the fall risk from what situation they're in. But now we want to figure out how we can raise this person up. With before with Tandem Prussics, we created a three to one system. And in that three to one system, we had to have Prussics as our progress capture. So somebody had to physically come out here and set those Prussics every time we needed to do a reset. We're gonna show you the beauty of this Maestro, okay? The beauty of this Maestro, it is, is change of direction pulley. It's got a pulley in here and it's got a cam so it acts as its own progress capture. So as we build that three to one again, we're gonna show you how Progress capture and a change of direction pulley at the anchor all happens with one device. So at this particular time, we're at a one-to-one. -one. So once again, if we pull one foot, it raises them up, but we have, to, we have to lift the full weight of them. So if he's 180 pounds, it takes us to lift that all 180 pounds. 
Since we decided, since we're lower on manpower, we're gonna go ahead and start off with a three to one mechanical advantage system. What's great about it, in theory, is that now we only have to work to lift a third of the weight. So if he's 180 pounds, now we only have to lift 60. So same as before, we're using a Petzl rescue sender for our rope grab. This doesn't mean you can't use a Gibbs cam or you can't use Prusik cord if you have that in your kit. Whatever your outfit is or your kit's outfitted with, use that if you need be. But these uh, Petzl rescue senders really do a great job at going on and off the rope easy and they're nice and smooth to use. We got that coming back into a Rock Exotica double pulley. The good thing about these pulleys is you don't have to take them off the carabiner to get the rope inside of them. You just open up the side plate, feed the rope in, close the side plate and you're good to go. So now we have our three to one. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to our patient. Patient, are you ready to be lifted? Yes, sir. All right, patient indicates that he's ready to be lifted. He is in his harness and he still has his belay on. Since we've captured his progress with our white line, Patient, can you take your blue mane off? Blue mane coming off. If he's able to untangle himself from his own gear, whatever gear got him in the situation to begin with, we're gonna keep him in that gear as long as possible, but once we've put our own system in place, we can go ahead and take that out of the way, and we no longer have that line to cause us any trouble down the road. So our patient indicates that we're ready to go. So as we pan up here, we'll be able to see the beautiful maestro in action. So as my haul team's standing here, we're gonna have preparatory command haul team prepare to haul. 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 Now as we go up, if you listen closely, you can hear that clicking of that camion action inside of that maestro. And the beautiful thing about this system is again, it captures its own progress. Stop, set. set. So as we set, the maestro sets itself. Nobody has to touch anything, it's automatic. We've done our set now and we've decided, you know what? Guys, that was pretty tough, wasn't it? So we're gonna add a little bit more mechanical advantage into this system. So what does that mean? We just have to add another pulley back here at our Beckett on the Maestro, which is built in, this comes this way. So all we have to do is add another pulley there and we can make a five to one system out of the existing hardware we have. So again, right now we have a three to one. Zach's gonna open up that device, we clip in to our Beckett, we come back to our change of direction, clip it in, clip it into our Rock Exotica pulleys, and now we just have to lengthen this system back out so that we get the maximum amount of lift with our pull. As you guys know, a five to one system, we have to input five feet of pull length to get one foot of lift. So this system, it adds mechanical advantage, which makes it easier to lift, but it also means you're gonna have to do more stop sets and resets to get that person all the way up if you want them to get all the way up. So I'm just gonna grab here at the rescue center and I'm gonna pull this back towards my edge. Now you'll see, as we start to lift this person up, it takes a lot less input force. Victim, you ready to be hauled? All right, we're gonna go up on white, prepare to haul, haul. Stop. Stop. All right, we got our victim at a good spot to where now we can lower this victim. So as we come back up and we talk about transitioning from a raise to a lower, this is where the maestro really shines. So all we have to do to take this system apart, we already have progress capture. So we don't have to change anything there. All we have to do is take our rope out of our inline system and we can lower this person to the ground. With the right equipment and the right training, your capabilities go up. As your capabilities go up, you're able to do things that you wouldn't always be able to do in, previous, in the previous times of doing rescue with a six bar rack and all that other stuff. Doing that changeover, you have to load, release, hitch out and do all this stuff to get, to get into a lowering operation. With this device, you can go from raising to lowering just like that. So to operate the Maestro, Zach's gonna hold it in that S configuration. That S configuration is gonna mean that he's feeding this friction notch in the back of the Maestro here. He's gonna maintain control of this right with his right hand, or his left hand, and now he's gonna open the device with his right hand. So Ryan's gonna check with our patient, make sure we're good to go. We're good. So our patient indicates that he's ready to go down to the ground. 
So now we can start this lowering operation. Zach's going to start his lower by opening the device up and controlling the descent with his hand, just like we would if it was a six bar rack if we were repelling or if this was a six bar rack at the top side and we were lowering from the top. As you can see, as this rope comes down, he's able to feed it nice and smooth and it goes over that pre-manufactured edge that we have this beautiful facility at IFSI and we're able to see our victim make his way down, hopefully to the ground. Now, of course, we didn't show you every possible option out there. We just tried to show you several. Victim on and, the ground. And they did allow us to use equipment of our choice. We tried to show you some really basic things that you can do. And also, and then they let us pick the equipment. So we showed you some of the best ones, equipment that we know of and that, that we like. And guys, if you like Thank this equipment job. that you've seen here today, you can get this stuff at rescuedirect.com. They, uh, they sell this stuff to any technical rescue team. They work well with government agencies or private industry if you guys are looking for stuff. Or if you're, if you're just a, a recreational rock climber, Rescue Direct does a great job and will give you good prices on this stuff too. So we had one more question before I let Ryan and Joe and Zach tidy up for the day and kind of tell you what we covered. And that was, what's the service life on the hardware and the devices that we're using? So that's dependent on each manufacturer, but each one of these pieces, including the rope, all the way down to the pressure cord, needs to be inspected daily. It's called life safety rope for a reason. We don't tie this off and tie trucks off at a pin in for this. We use this for us and to make rescues. So it has to be inspected daily, signed off on, and if any of it's dropped, it needs to be sent back to the manufacturer to have uh, to make sure there's no hairline fractures in it. So each individual piece is rated, usually by ANSI, and tested to make sure that it's in the rescue mode. Most fire departments in the state of Illinois operate at a 15 to 1 safety ratio with their gear and their rope out west. They're a little bit different because they do a lot of mountain climbing and they don't climb off of buildings and ravines like we do here. So it depends on your local jurisdiction. Ryan, is there anything else on well, that? I like you... what you're saying because fishing with rope, okay? What I want to see though is what I always recommend you got to buy the right equipment. So you got to know what you are buying. You can't just go out and best buy anything. So this rope that we bought here, this is sterling rope, and I know that uh, it's general use. So I know it's rated for at least 600 pounds. We keep the history on it. So I want you, you know, if you're going to rope, keep a rope log on it. Keep that history. When did I use it? How many times did I use it? What did I use it for? Okay. If, if you don't, if you go, somebody pulls out a rope and they, and you go, how old is that rope? And they don't know, we're not using it, right? That's utility rope. This is life safety rope. I need to know how old this rope is. Okay. I need to know it's full history. All right. To sum it up. Okay. To end this is I'm hoping you, we showed you a plan that you like. Hope we showed you several different options that might work for you because we didn't want to just show you one that might work for Springfield. In Springfield, if we come in here, we're going to just, we're going to get, secure the scene, call for our rope rescue team, okay? Because we do, we have a rope rescue team and it's easy for us. But you know, I want you to go out now, get that right training. Yes, I want you to go get rope rescue operations training. Come see us and we'll get you to go take our week long course, okay? Start thinking, then when you're taking our class, you can start seeing what the right equipment is. And that gives you different options. And then so that way you have the right people and you get more people trained. So they get more, the right training. They got the, you got the right equipment, you got the right people. So you come up with the right plan. Hey, I'd like to thank Zach and Ryan and Joe today for a great, fast, hands-on class on making rope rescues with the First Do Company. Uh, I also want to thank all our sponsors today. CMC, PMI, Sterling Rope, uh, Rescue Direct, Harkin Industrial, Elevated Safety. These are all partners that are willing to share secrets. There are no secrets in the fire service. Everything's copied. We're all taking care of each other, and that's what you should be doing too. So we want to thank all those people for participating with us. Next week, if I can get my camera person to pan around while I'm talking to you here for one more second, we'll be on Collapse Street. We'll be in the collapse pile, talking first two company considerations for a building collapse with Danny Bracken and uh, John Fry. We'll be over in the frame pile, in the new frame town, and a little bit in the concrete pile. Uh, we appreciate you being with us today. Remember, the handouts for today's class are on the comment section, and we'll post them later on today on all our uh, social media channels so you have access to it. Keep training, keep taking care of each other, and we look forward to seeing you here again at the University of Illinois Fire Service Institute.